I'm super excited. So excited. Because we're going to talk about Lego. Our next guest is an AFOL. I hope I have that right and didn't say something wrong. Uh, Paul Hetherington is joining us now. He's a Lego artist. Paul, Lego artist, yes! What does AFOL stand for? <laughs> it stands for Adult Fan of Lego. Okay. Yeah, You've got it's another it's one an over here, too. Right here, right here. <laughs> uh, right. Lego, got it. Well, everybody loves Lego. Everyone's had some kind of experience with it. What is it about Lego? It's the toy that never changes, you know? But it does. It evolves. It does. Well, it's, it's constantly changing. Yeah. You know, I look at it like the pieces are a bit like a language. And much like conventional language, you know, it's, you're always getting new, uh, new vowels, new uh, pieces to the language. It's uh, growing. Things yeah, it's growing. constantly yeah. growing. And uh, so you, you're just always able to create new things. Uh, and it's a bit of a challenge to keep up with all the new parts and now, integrate them into the builds. Paul, one of the things, I mean, uh, as a kid, my favorite toy, beside my, besides my penis, was, uh, was Lego. Um, and yeah. I... Well, the two go hand well, in hand. Well, exactly, yes. But he, here's the thing that I, I think is, is interesting about Lego, because when I was a kid, you used to go buy a whole bunch of Lego and just build whatever you want with it. And nowadays, I find they have, it's like basically, it's a very specific... A map of stuff. So you go and, you, and, and they want you to build a, a specific thing. I mean, what, what, what was that transition like? I mean, is it is it is there a reason for that? I mean, I don't. Well, I think I mean part of it is our just our culture. You know, yeah. right. you know when Star Wars came out in the late seventies, uh, you had all of a sudden toys were uh, marketing to the movies, uh, and I think that's part of right. it. You know, nowadays Lego Lego held off for a long time. It wasn't until I think nineteen ninety nine when they they brought out the Star Wars franchise. Mm -hmm. Right. So from then, you know, now it's kind of snowballed, and now you've got Lord of the Rings and but how do you, uh, I mean, SpongeBob superheroes. You um, obviously buy. I mean, you obviously you create your own stuff, right? So do you? Yeah. You just uh, you, do know, you buy I, a whole bunch of things and just kind of mix it all together well, and know, figure out what you have. Yeah. Well, it kind of happened organically. Uh, I just started collecting Lego, not really with the mind of of creating anything with it. You know, maybe doing a few things, but it was more about collecting the sets that I had when I was a, ch a child. And so I would go to garage sales as my parents were antique mm -hmm. collectors, and they kind of raised me to know the buy value. Buy up all of, the Lego. Just bought up all the Lego. Yeah, but when did you go from you know just putting the bricks together to making stuff like your Lady Gaga? Like it's art. I mean, you, it yeah, is art. art. Well, exactly. Let's... It takes time. So I had all the Lego from doing the garage sales, and then in about 2000, when you know the internet started to get bigger, yeah, that was when a lot of all the. Uh, people in their different genres could network and get together and uh, we discovered there was a Vancouver Lego Club. Okay, so the Vancouver Lego Club, you're a part of that and we're looking at your wow. Lady Gaga uh, set here. It is it is a whole concert. H well, how big is this in its entirety? Uh, well, it's about five feet long. Uh, it has about 700 minifigures in the uh, monster pit. And they're all dressed up in different outfits and uh, so yeah, there you can see the monster pit. Uh, it's it's lighted up, but basically I built a light box around it. And there, just in terms of how we can get just the idea of the size of it, I mean, what, what, what would be the dimensions of that? Oh, the, well, the actual castle is uh, two and a half feet by wow. two feet high. How long cool. did it take you to make that one? Uh, about two months. Wow. And really a month of that was trying to figure out how to make the, uh, the castle walls open. Because I don't know if you've seen the show, but the castle walls actually open to reveal the the rooms inside. I know. I mean, I, I don't know what you're talking so, about. So <laughs> to do that in Lego and to do it exactly like the real castle was a bit of a challenge. How much Lego do you have? How much money have you spent on this? I mean, I'm assuming it's not just garage sales. No, well, to keep up with the current parts, you have to, you know, buy a lot of the new sets. And uh, it's a bit of work keeping current with everything. But uh, I don't know, I probably, I'm guessing I have about two million pieces, because uh, I've been collecting for 20 years. Right. It's like anything, it's like clothes. Every year you just get more and more. But Lego people, we don't get rid of our Lego, like you probably get rid of clothes. It doesn't, Lego never goes out of style. Oh, true. Are, are, is there, are there pieces that, that they don't make anymore that are kind of valuable? That, so if, yeah, you're, if you're like, look, I need a piece, but I, I, this doesn't make it anymore, you have to try to find it from somewhere. Like, I mean, is that happening? Yeah, there, there is a website called Bricklink, Bricklink.com, and that's where uh, people open stores and they basically sell parts of their collection. Wow, uh, amazing! Within the community, it's commonly known as Cracklink because Crack it's Link. extremely addictive. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the most sought-after things in the Lego world? Uh, I don't, you know, it depends on what you're building. Uh, minifigures are extremely popular. Probably the highest value pieces are some of the discontinued Star Wars minifigures. Right. People will pay up to forty, fifty dollars. Wow. There's actually a set. They made a, I think it's the biggest Lego set ever made. It's the Millennium Falcon. What? 
And initially it was a, it was a six hundred dollar set when you bought it new, and it's been discontinued, and now it's worth probably I would three thousand. that one. Okay, let's look at some of more uh, yeah. your work that we've got some mm. pictures of it here because of course we couldn't bring it all to the studio. Tell us about this. Okay, well this is Poseidon, uh, and he has Atlantis uh, underneath his throne. This was built for a Vancouver Lego Club mythology show that we did at the Surrey Museum. And so that's under the throne that we're looking the at Underneath the throne, there. there's Atlantis. And what you can't see in the picture is all the automation. There's a little clam <laughs> at, the, opens at the top that opens and closes, and SpongeBob is the ruler of Atlantis. Of course. And I he's mean, inside the clam. Duh. Makes sense. So how big is Poseidon, the he whole is, thing? Uh, well, he's four and a half feet tall and probably two, two feet wide. And you've brought some pieces with you t here today because you do yep. something different with your your Lego. Tell us what this one is here. Yeah, well, this is kind of a behind the scenes sneak peek. Uh, this is part of a larger creation, but this, I'll turn it on. It's basically to show some of the automation that you can do with Lego. So you've got a full control <sighs> panel in there? Pretty much, this is really some older technology, Yeah. but it, you know, it, it does the job. You, it runs about three different motors, and you can program them and record. Oh, that's just great. Robin I'm is in like, nerd heaven myself. right now. Huh. Yeah. Okay, and let's look at oh. some of the other stuff, because we saw Atlantis that you've got a fun house. Uh, how big is this one? Oh, uh, well, this one's, once again, about two feet. Uh, this one came about because I was going to one of the fan conventions down in Seattle last October called BrickCon. And, you know, it's really cool if you can have something new to bring that hasn't been shown on the Internet yet. Mm -hmm. um, so with about a week to go, I just kind of threw this fun house together. And, uh, really? Yeah. It was, I when I so throw Lego together, it does not look <laughs> like that. Okay, let's look at the Mardi Gras, too, because this one's quite incredible. Tell us about this one. Uh, oh well, once God. again, this one, this one was just something I built for BrickCon as well, and it actually ended up winning the Best in Show that year in 2010. How big is this one, and how many little figures we got bit, here? Well, once again, about 600 minifigures. Uh, it's about five different... New Orleans style buildings. There's a bit of the levee in there. There's five or six floats. And in yeah. front of us here, we've got the little pa That's Paul cool. Frank. Yeah, the Paul Frank the Julius. Yeah, it's great. And there's something here that's a surprise. What is in the box? Well, I've just for fun to prove that Lego can, you know, you can build just about anything. It has Star Wars wrapping paper. Yeah, well, I, last year you had an addition to your family, I understand. Chewbacca. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, I had a baby uh, Chewbacca. And for those who don't know, it's a dog. It's a dog. <laughs> yeah. Can so, I open it? Yes, why don't you just lift it straight up? And okay, okay, okay. Are we ready here? There you go. What? That <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. So, yeah, it's a little mini it's a Chewbacca. Little chewy. Look at it. When and the setting was I figured, where would Chewbacca want to hang out? With a bunch and, of bones. Exactly. Well, the bones actually spell Chewy. <laughs> oh, that's and so cute. he is uh, basically in Jabba's palace next to Han and Carbonite, kind of protect, yeah, you know, protecting can I his pick body. It up? I don't want to break yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Here, let me pick it up. Oh, oh I, I didn't don't realize that. So, do these come apart? Like, could I break it possibly by that? <laughs> well, yeah, it's not glued. <gasps> okay, I see. But, I mean, that you can pick so it up. Cool. It's, yeah. Look at him in there. It's close. And that, Chewy. That's on Solo there. Yeah, he's he protecting is. his buddy, right? Of course. He is. Yeah. And these are all the bones, leftover bones from the Rancor, the right? big monster yes. that's underneath. Good. I'm speechless. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen. Thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. Well, and thank you for joining us today. So if people want to find out more about you and your work, where can they find you? Uh, well, basically, the, the VLC, vlc.ca is the Vancouver Lego Club website. I also have a Flickr page. Okay, uh, you people can look want to up. see more of My it? My username is Brick, Brick Baron. Okay. Like the Red Baron, but Brick Baron. Um, so they can look me up there. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you. You're so welcome. cool. Thank Shall you so we? much, Paul. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Don't go away. That is so cool.